Hi, this is Kevin with KDM GM Owner Pro Advertisers Club, a totally free site to advertise. Join on the link below if you want to join, uh, advertise for free. Join today and start advertising immediately. Okay, uh, it, today is um, Wednesday, February the 7th, I believe. Yep. And last night, let's see. I've been getting nailed hard as far as lots, losing lots. of Like this one, I only lost five. But it's been like above 70, 80, stuff like that. Um, now, is my videos making me a target? I, I don't know. I, and if it is, I'm not going to worry about it. But the, I guess what the r real question I'm trying to ask here is, why have I started to get hit hard? And is it because um, now above the radar is my scavenger golems too high compared to, to my defense? That's what I got to figure out and bring it back into balance so that at least I go back to where I could break even or even gain extra parts between claims. So, uh, but anyway, before I do that, go uh, Bronze Dragon, I asked, uh, I made a video and then I asked a question. And... Um, Good stuff. Two points. Once you get above a certain stash level, you just become a juicy target. So I mentioned the other day that I go with four-hour claims during the day. Okay, that's yeah, that is good if you can do it. I can't do that. I find that even though there is a 20% hit on it, I find that claiming before I hit that 700, 900 stash range, I get attacked fewer times and overall works out better. That's what I got to figure out. What 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 is my range? I do use longer claims when I go to bed, though, and time it out. So I hit a regular 8 or 12 hour on the weekend claim right before bed. Two, on the equipment slots, they will each have different types of equipment for each slot. You went over the pictures of them on the expedition page. The items will drop in expeditions and at the time. May start dropping in crates as well. Not sure about that one. But I think they will also be able to be worked with it in the Pirate Forge to improve them, similarly to the modules. Cheers. Uh, Bronze Dragon, thank you for your reply. I appreciate you watching the videos and commenting. Thank you very much. Um, so let's get back to the game and let's do my eight battles. So, again, I because I, I was thinking the other day, if some people, because I'm getting about 30 to 40 views. And it might make, I, I'm not, you know, and I'm, it's all in good fun. So if you're attacking me, keep doing it. I'm not saying don't, but I, it, it just changed. And when it changes for somebody like me, it, it gets my attention because I really don't like change. And so I'm like, okay, what's causing it? So it's either that or my, I'm out of balance and the bigger guys are, are they're, they're seeing a juicier target is like, bronze dragon said so that's something to keep in mind that's why i think the balanced act is the best um because if you go all in on fortification then you you really don't have any power to attack at all um and you know at the end of the day is any one strategy wrong no it's what is best for you just like on investing or you know DCA or whatever. whatever whatever's best for you is what you got to do at the end of the day so let's get going here and do the stash and here we go let's see if I, I need I need about 200 I believe to break even that's a loss so I got actually I got eight more so I must have hold on no I got seven more I must have got an attack right before we started attacking because it was still saying eight all right let's go and so I'm starting off with two losses three losses now the losses ain't that big of a deal other than the fact you don't get any you lose but you're you you know you're talking ten or less five or less most of the time 
that's a victory. Let's see. There you go, 100. Look at that. So I'm in good shape. So I guess also what I'm trying to say is, as part of the balanced strategy, attacking is a good way to get to cover your losses and to break even at least. I'm, I'm already going to be ahead of uh, what I had and then some. So Again, why you should have a good power rating as well as a good fortification. And a faith. The faith is a big one too. They're, they're all important. And I, I do believe if you get unbalanced the game's going to notice that and people within the game are going to notice that and exploit it which is part of the game so uh, okay I got two more attacks uh, love to hear your strategy whatever it is you know leave a comment below that that's one of the reasons I make these videos of all the games I'm playing uh, basically just two that I make videos of but I got more that I want to start showing um, there's a game on um, IMX blockchain that's called Gods Unchained and their numbers are outstanding but I've never got into it because and I'm, I haven't checked in a while I'm going to check you can't get into it without with only crypto that's the only way you can get into it and I don't go on platforms that that's the only thing I got 700 here uh, so I'm gonna check that out a little bit might make a video on it but anyway it, it's a card game it's called gods and chain go check it out go to mutable X or, or mutable X scan and you can see all the data on how well it's doing I mean it's the numbers are off the charts at least it was I, I haven't been there in a while but I, I was thinking about you know comparing it to splinter lands is now IMX is a it's its token is IMX and it's I think 5x in the last month like a few things have it was at 60 cents and now it's like at two dollars and 20 cents so that's 4x and it's got a also VV's on that platform but you but it's not showing the data on it as far as it, it's kind of confusing on how they're kind of like hiding the data of what the overall sales and stuff like that are, which is kind of confusing because VV's in sales is doing better than God's Unchained, probably. And um, but anyway, go take a look at it. And so th you got two card games here, and one's kind of unknown, and both are unknown IP. But one seems to be doing better than the other. And I, I, I'll admit that. I think, and I don't play Gods Unchained, so I don't know if it is better or if I'd even like it. But, so then the question just right, raises up is why? What are they doing different than what Splinterlands is doing? And then how can we, you know, go in that direction, whether the team has to do it or the players or whatever. But, probably the underlying question I'm asking here is like a comic book will drop on candy or on Terra Virtua or Virtua it's, they drop the Terra and I think they changed the name again already uh, and a comic will drop on candy that those same comics won't even sell out and they'll be worth a couple dollars but if you dropped it on VV it would probably sell out especially the Golden Age DC comics definitely would sell out, which they did also on Candy, but the commons are going for like five bucks. Guarantee you they'd be going for 30, 50 bucks or more on uh, Vivi because we only have one Golden Age comic on Vivi, okay, and that's going for 35 and there's 48,000 mints. 48,000. The Candy DC comic go, Golden age comics there's only 5,000 mints if even that because they burn whatever didn't sell out so in some cases less and they're going for what they're going so what I'm saying is you might have the same product but just by being on a different platform it does better and the question is why
why is VV things that are the same thing over on another account, you know, in a way, why does, what have they done that, and I'm on both, I'm on all three, I'm on Splinterlands, VV, anyway, that's a question that I just asking myself, and maybe I'm not forming the question correctly, because I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to ask here, but I've always wondered, what if Splinterlands had dropped the, um, the, the what do you call it, on Vivi, the Rooney, because you could only get the Rooney with a uh, wallet, right, and uh, or crypto. I think Ethereum was the only one. I, I'm not positive because I didn't get one. But so what if they dropped the Rooney on Vivi or something like Rooney and because you can transfer it and you could transfer it back over to Splinterlands. But and, and you know, Golem Overlord could do something like that, too. You, you know, and I guess what I'm talking about is, you know, they're they're working with each other, which is always good, if possible. They might not talk to each other. They might not acknowledge you. I don't know. That's something for the team to worry about or try. But my point is, wow, that would expose the VV crowd to Splinterlands because I'll tell you, most people who are on Splinterlands aren't on Vivi, but the other way around, I bet you a lot of Splinterlands I bet you a lot of, uh, or, or vice versa, but I bet you a lot of Splinterlands players are already on VV, if at all. So that that cross, you know, promoting each other like they do within the Hive Engine network, you do that to a couple sites, like, you know, maybe Gods Unchained. They go to Gods Unchained and they talk to them and say, hey, can we make some Splinterland God Unchained cards that are transferable? And we drop them on each other's sites. I, I don't know. It's just an, an ideal. And and again, that's something I'd love to hear from everybody else what they think. If I was even able to formulate the question right. Okay. Um, let's go spend some parts. So, I claimed 685 plus 245 for a total of roughly 1,000. And 21 shards. And so, 249 scavenger golems. So let's go up here, and we're going to burn all the comp right away, because that's all you can do with it. Excuse me. Man, I got bad gas this morning. I ate that chicken sandwich, and I'm paying for it. Okay, so now I'm going to need 10 more to make it 255, and that will... Now, the theory that I'm attracting more attackers to myself is because lately I've been throwing, I usually go like 5% higher than what I lost. And that has kept me pretty much under the radar. I started doing like 50%. And on accident, I put all my reputation on the scavenger golems the other day and I got nailed. So my scavenger golems compared to the rest of the, it became unbalanced. And it popped up on a lot of people's, and they boom. That's what I'm thinking. I can't prove that, but that's what I'm thinking. All right, so let's do reputation, the max. Oh, I can do 50. Don't want to do 50. Let's upgrade one of these. Let's go upgrade fortification. There we go. Upgraded it. I am now. I'm naturally at 85, but I get 24 for my level. Now, now look at this. When you get to the 49th, 50 is the max you can go. And then when you get to 50, you sell off or burn all your experience points to drop down to like 35. And then I'll be prestige 12. And then you just repeat and cycle. You you know repeat the cycle. Um, but when you get to 49th. I need 7,000 more experience points to get up to Prestige 12 now and to max out at 50. So that 
otherwise the levels are pretty I'm doing like three or four levels a day this is going to take me about a week okay so let's do I got 233 let's do 33 in the bank I always throw a little bit in the bank just because he's going to do something and he did actually on one of the quests that's what you got to have You got to put over a thousand parts into the bank. Okay, so I got 200 left, and we're going to put that on reputation. And I'm going to try to get it, I'm going to try to keep it above 20. Maybe 30 if I do well. And there we go. Uh, 22 oh, Okay, good. I'm in good shape. Okay, I need 800 more to add to my bank in order to complete this one. I need to upgrade power again and identify a module. I'm probably going to recycle that one. 015 burn shard. So I got a lot to do on this one too. I'm just stockpiling shards right now. Check this out. We are burning. Actually, today we minted more than we burned yesterday it was we burned twice as much as we minted that goes up and down but that's making hot, uh, the the shards a little bit more expensive we had one person join the other day but we have pretty much hit a brick wall on new signups and the actives have been right about 2100 plus that's right where it's been at today uh, 37 crates were opened out of seven open that's a good sign and we've burned more parts than we did mint so that's good so all right well that's the numbers um let's go look real quick at the an inventory and i'll show you what bronze dragon was talking about and these are these right here once we're able to use it we'll put a module in there or a, a, a In the expedition, we'll put one of these items and look at all that. This is really looking cool. We just can't do anything with it yet. It's coming soon. So, looking forward to that. Um, thank you for watching. I know your time is uh, very important, and for you to spend time with me, I appreciate it. The uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Go check out Pro Advertisers Club. The link below. And if you want to join and um, have a nice day.